Most of my work is portraiture, but I also do a lot of fine art work on the border of surrealism with ideas and concepts that center around time, mortality, and space. My parents always said I came out of the womb drawing, but I was also very much apt and had abilities for science and math and things like that. So I was very much encouraged to go towards the, the sciences. And so I ended up doing medical illustration for a long time. And then about 2011, my brother passed away. And that was something that kind of really shook me up and made me realize how short life is and I needed to be doing the things that I always wanted to do. And so I redirected myself and started focusing more towards painting. I started my series of two hour portraits so that I could quicken my pace, liven up my brushstrokes, so that I could have something that would challenge me. The way that I set it up was I wanted this moment to be a time where I shared a moment with my sitter. So being present, making eye contact if we choose to, having the time to have conversation, getting to know someone, sharing a time and sharing space, and kind of having something at the end of it. That was what was really important for me at the end. It wasn't just about the image, it was about the time spent together. I have a goal of doing 2,000 before I leave this planet. At the moment, I have about 420 that I've painted to date. And so I've had people that have sat for me all over the world, but I also really enjoy having people come and sit for me again multiple times because then it shows the growth in how people change over time, but also how my practice and how my hand changes over time. Besides my portraiture, I'm also very interested in conceptual-based work. I was going through this thing called the artist way, and I don't know how many people are familiar with that, but I was doing this whole um, practice of restructuring my brain, restructuring how I looked at making art. So I really wanted to focus on this kind of icon or this talisman or this guide or this spiritual goddess and that was Judy Garland. And I was very interested in the synchronicities, um, which was also very important for the artist's ways of looking at synchronicities. I grew up in Kansas. She was in a movie that took place in Kansas. And then also her attachment to the queer culture. We look towards Judy Garland and the Wizard of Oz and oftentimes as a sign or a signal or coding when you're in public with people back in the days before it was okay to be out. Uh, a way that you could find other people was like, are you a friend of Dorothy? And if you answered yes, then you were queer, right? And so that was one way that I looked at it. But also, the day that Judy Garland died, there were three tornadoes that hit Kansas. And also the day that her funeral took place was the same day that the Stonewall riots erupted. So I was very interested in that kind of idea surrounding my place in time, her place in time, and how we all kind of like, had this mass consciousness or this mass kind of, of experience. And so I looked at doing a portrait of Judy Garland as Dorothy, as this goddess who guided me and other queer people through the world. It has my hometown in Kansas, the tornado hitting, and then finally in the final panel, the Emerald City. And then I did this whole series based on queer icons that I wanted to feature that were important to the education of where we are to this point. The second series that I would like to talk about is Fragments of Time and Space. And Fragments of Time and Space was uh, me sitting in my space observing the passing of time during the pandemic. And so I was looking outside and looking at how the seasons changed and I was painting 12 by 12 or 10 by 10 squares in different times and seasons as time passed. And that kind of what brought me into the interior series called the Quieter Interior. And that was about, instead of looking out, looking within. And everything has this kind of like central axis around light and how light moves through time and space. And so I was looking at how light traveled through the room. This was all a time period when my mother was um, living through Alzheimer's and the decline of her, I kind of matched with this series of work. 
And so it was all about the light of my mother passing through the space and how she was still with me even though she wasn't necessarily with us. It was a really lovely end to the series because the day that my mother passed away, and I didn't know she had passed away yet, but I was, we were leaving because we'd go meet and have breakfast with my parents. There's this one particular day where I was climbing down the back staircase from our bedroom downstairs and I turned around and the door was closed and there was this beautiful light that was just going right through the sliver of the, of the door frame. And I looked at it and I was like, interesting. This was the only um, picture that I painted from a photo. So I turned around and I snapped the photo and it was this beautiful sliver of light and the door was closed. So it was like the last painting from the series and um, went over to my parents' house and my mom had passed away that day. So it was like, it was a really kind of wonderful bookend to this particular series of work. When I make art, it's important for me to be a part of the conversation, to have a voice, to express the voice, but also to listen. A lot of it is about listening, to be present. It's about being alive for me.